This is how I train my body in order to be able to do the splits. For some reason, a lot of people, especially martial artists, want to be able to do the splits. This video will show you my full split routine, which starts right when I wake up in the morning. What I find is that I am not able to do the splits to my best ability first thing in the morning or any time in the morning for that matter. When I first wake up, I especially feel a lot of tightness in my hamstrings and my lower back that extends from my lower back all the way down into my heels. So I get up and I just start to rotate my ankles and get the blood flowing to my legs and my toes. Next, I begin doing some leg raises, but these are not your typical leg raises you would do for six pack abs or for stomach strength. Of course, they work the core, but if you notice, while I'm lifting my legs up, I'm accentuating the upward motion. I'm pulling my toes back, extending my heels out, and I'm doing these leg lifts for the stretch they give me in the hamstrings and the lower back. So my focus is coming up. Then I'll rotate a bit and try to get some blood flowing into the groin area, especially the inner thighs where we need flexibility and strength for being able to do our splits. Personally, for me, I find the splits is only possible if my lower back and my hamstrings are flexible. So I'll do some simple yet effective morning stretches. This is an incredibly important stretch for me, not only for my kicks, but for my splits, which works my lower back as well as my hip joints. I try to get the ankle as close to the head as I can, keeping my back posture straight and my head up. Butterfly stretch, classic martial arts stretch that's so pivotal and so important for doing the splits. I love bouncing. I have a lot of friends who are into flipping, gymnastics, and parkour who have incredible flexibility and all of them bounce. So I use a combination of bounce stretching as well as stillness and static stretching. Trying to be respectful to my girlfriend and not wake her up in the morning, I like to do these rollover stretches. And just doing anything is better than doing nothing. This really gets my neck, spine, and hamstrings loose and warm and will set the tone for a very flexible day. If I am flexible by the evening time, it is because of the stretches and the warm up I did in the morning time. Finishing with some leg raises that again focus on the upward motion with the ankles and toes pulled back. My bed style workout is over, I get some breakfast, and then I head outside to do my full morning workout. During my morning workout, I'm not too concerned with being able to do the splits yet. I'm trying to set the tone for a flexible day. So I tend to do a lot of leg, core, and back exercises and conditioning movements that give me not only flexibility in the areas I will need it for the split, but also train me as an all-around athlete and give me a well-balanced athleticism, not only in the hamstrings, but also the back, also the core, also the quads, also the calves, working the yin and the yang, the inside and the outside, you might be asking what kind of diet do I have and what kind of foods do I eat and what kind of foods do I avoid to give me amazing flexibility. Well, I'll put some links down in the description and comments below this video. I want you to check out on foods you should avoid and foods you should consume to give you the best health, the least amount of inflammation and the most flexibility that will hopefully keep you super flexible and youthful for as long a period of time as possible. This is where I first try to see how low I'm able to go in the morning time. 
keep in mind it's only 7 a.m. I just sit there for a little bit, a little movement, a little bouncing, and I'll hit this split with reps, maybe five or 10 repetitions, up and down, up and down, holding about 10 or 20 seconds as low as I possibly can go. If you notice, I'm keeping my feet flat during this morning stretch because I find that that helps to stretch my inner knees. In the Chinese martial arts, we call these in English reverse bow stances, and they're very important for being able to do the split. If you notice, my left foot is flat, my right heels are on the ground, and I'll use my elbow to push my knee out to really work the flexibility in my inner hips and groin area. This also takes an incredible amount of suppleness and flexibility in the lower back, which will serve us well in the evening when we do our full split. Classic martial arts stance, the horse stance, also good for anyone wanting to do the split. If you notice, I keep my butt down, my knees out, my toes pointing forward, and in the morning time, I'll rest my hands on my inner knees and I'll push them out as I stretch my shoulders and back side to side. This is one of our qigong postures and it's really good for getting blood flowing to the areas we need it to flow in order to be flexible and able to sink into our split. This morning routine lasts for about an hour and this is set two of split training. Just telling my mind and telling my body it's okay to sink down, this is normal. And if you notice, I like to fluctuate from flat foot to the heels and being able to go from a split to sitting on the ground, I find is very important and those people that cannot do this are not able to do the splits. Stretching side to side, left and right, dropping the elbow to the knee. Right now, I'm opening up my inner thighs. I'm bringing blood flow to my legs and my lower back, but I'm also getting an extremely good stretch for my hamstrings. This is something I would suggest you do before work or before school, and it's something that I do every morning. I like to hold these stretches in the morning for between 10 seconds to 30 seconds, and my goal is to be relaxed, be patient, I know about 99% of people in the world just get up and go to work or go to school. So if I do any amount of effort, I'm already ahead of most people. Getting back to our butterfly stretches, which really focus on the muscles and the tendons and the joints that we need for the split. A little bit of bouncing, a little bit of static holding, and dropping the chest down as close to the feet as we can get it. The efforts I put in in the morning give me that flexibility the rest of the day. For me, this is the stretch I need the most, just a forward, simple stretch. For my body, this really activates my lower back and my hamstrings and will make me appear as if I'm flexible for the rest of the day. Although it's just an illusion, I'm not actually crazy flexible, I just work hard for it. My goal during these forward L-shaped stretches is to try to lift the heels off the ground and keep the back as flat as I can. And I always like to do this bent knee style stretch after my L-shaped stretches. Again, my favorite stretch for kicking, but also for the splits. For some reason, this really relaxes and opens up my lower back. For me, they work really well together. And when I do these stretches as a pair, three to four sets during my morning routine, I find people that have flexibility are able to do this movement, coming up from the ground to your feet without using the hands. Keeping the feet flat and pressing up. See how many times, maybe 10 to 30 reps, you can do this in the morning. And I usually do this toward the end of my morning routine. And this just helps to realign my muscles, realign my joints give me a little bit of flexibility, also endurance training.
In addition to the L-sit, this stretch tends to bring me a lot of health in my neck and lower back, and it makes me flexible and also allows me to prevent injury. Finishing up the morning routine, I wanna do about five to 20 reps of split training. So I use my fingertips, or better yet, use the palms, sink down as low as I feel is comfortable, and back up to the feet. And I'll fluctuate from flat-footed sometimes, and then up on the heels sometimes. The final rep I'll hold for a longer period of time, and then take a little break. After a short break, I do one of my secrets to having extreme flexibility, and this is my kicks. Not only do kicks work your cardiovascular system, they give you incredible endurance, but they're also gonna work your core. If you want a good tight six pack in your stomach, then do your daily kicks. If you notice, I'm not kicking very high, and I'm not kicking very fast, because it's still the morning time. My morning kicking routine does not involve power kicks, so no round kicks, no front kicks, no side kicks, no hook kicks. Instead, it's only straight kicks that start with the simple straight kick. And next we go to the across the body straight kick. My goal during each of these kicks is to keep my bottom foot flat on the ground, to keep my spine straight, my hands up in front. And as I'm kicking, I pull my toes back. I thrust my heel out and I try to cause as much stretch to happen in my hamstring as possible. The blade kick is next and this is the most important kick for split training because it's gonna work not only the muscles in the outer part of the hip, but each kick will stretch and condition the muscles, the tendons, the joints, that we will need to do our split later on. I follow it up with outside kicks. These outside smash kicks work more of the full leg and the full range of motion, and they're crucial every morning if I wanna be flexible by the evening time. I would say I repeat about 10 to 20 repetitions on each leg. Personally, I like to do 10 reps on each leg, but go through the entire cycle of kicks two or three times. I'm currently in Bangkok, Thailand, and I've been hiking a lot throughout India and in mountainous regions. So I've noticed that my endurance has been very good, but my range of motion is getting worse because of all the trekking I've been doing carrying a 50 pound backpack. So I'm gonna hit these blade kicks for a few extra sets to try to bring some range of motion and some flexibility back to my legs and allow me to sink into the split by the evening time. Believe it or not, these reverse axe kicks are one of my other secrets and they're crucially important to give me that split flexibility they are so good, not only for conditioning the butt muscles, the glute muscles, but each kick allows me to feel a really healthy stretch in the front of my hip joint. So do not neglect your reverse X kicks. Keep the leg as straight as possible. After my straight kicks are finished, I go into a standing stretch of different positions. I try to do each of these positions without losing my balance. It's incredible how much effort and how much strength this takes for the bottom leg because it's fighting to keep you balanced, but it's also incredibly important for flexibility. I start by stretching the quad, move into stretching the hamstring, then stretching the inner groin and outer hip with this bent knee stretch. then hooking onto the big toe like you would do in a Ashtanga yoga class 
and thrusting the foot forward, keeping the spine as straight as possible. Then change the leg's orientation, thrust it to the side, keeping the chest pointing forward. Next, grab onto the sole of the foot and lift it into the air as high as you can, opening up those hips and holding perfect balance. Also a dance style pose you'll see in many yoga classes, grab onto the leg, lift as high as you can, hold that balance, breathe deeply and patiently, and feel those hip joints opening. My left leg is much more flexible than my right leg, but my right leg is much more powerful than my left leg. So even when I am stretching, I make sure to give equal focus to both legs, even though you might think because my left leg is more flexible, I might want to train the right leg more. I do not believe in this. I train each leg equally because I want to have a perfect balance with every muscle group in my physical body. And again, just to recap, start with the quad stretch, move into the hamstring stretch, grab onto the ankle and lift the bent leg as high as you can. Hook the two fingers on the big toe and thrust the leg forward. Then keep the chest forward and change the leg's orientation to be to the side. Grab onto the sole of the foot and lift it as straight and as high as you possibly can, fighting for good balance. And finally, ending with our dance pose, reaching out, lifting up the leg, feeling that stretch in the hip and the lower back. As I'm getting toward the end of my hour-long morning routine, I hit some classic bow stances to the left, trying not to use my hands and sinking down as far as I possibly can. Notice how both feet are flat on the ground and I'm trying to keep the front leg bent to a 90 degree angle and the back leg completely straight. Right now I'm feeling the stretch in my hip joints and I'm feeling it in a very healthy way, which I can tell is opening me up and will serve me well tonight when I practice my full split training. Next drop down into reverse bow, which is also gonna give us that functional athletic flexibility that we need. There are many people out there who can do the splits because they're naturally flexible, but usually what I find is they have no power. I want to have the power but also the flexibility. Because my focus today is doing the split, now that I'm all warmed up and breathing hard and I got a really good sweat going, I'm gonna hit the split training a couple times and move my hands from front to back, getting a little bit mobile in the split, seeing if I can transition from feet flat to toes facing up. And I'll do this about five or 10 times this is allowing my body to communicate with my brain. They will talk together and the brain will be told it's okay to do these split type movements. After having a productive day at work or school, I go into my evening routine at about 6 p.m. and it's incredible. Because we did our bedside routine, because we did our morning routine, my evening routine is so flexible it's scary. I start off my evening routine doing a few bow stances to the left and the right, again focusing on both feet being flat and sinking down as deep as I can my back straight. Then transitioning to our reverse bow using my elbow to push that knee out as far as I can. I'm trying to open up the groin and open up my inner hips. And of course, switching to the other side for balance. Uh -huh. 
Horse stance, crucially important, but when you sink into your horse stance, feet flat, knees opened. Sink the butt down as far as you can and keep the back straight. Once I'm feeling the burn, I like to bring in my hands, push the knees out further, and get a little bit of lower back and shoulder stretch in there. Now I'll do my first split of my evening session. I'm trying to hold this for 20 to 30 seconds, keeping the feet flat, and just telling my body to open. Then I lock the legs in position and do a few split style push-ups, which I find not only work the chest, the shoulders, the triceps, and the arms, but also if you notice, my legs and my hips are dropping up and down it's like doing a push-up in a split position for the legs. I flip my hands around and I get up on my heels, Jean-Claude Van Damme style. See if I can sit to the ground with control. And once I'm in this stretch, which is almost into the full split, I like to go left and right for about 10 or 20 seconds to open up those hammies. What I'm feeling right now is a lot of flexibility. When I first woke up, my back was tight. My hamstrings felt like they were very, very stiff. My inner hips felt like they were unable to do the split. And now that I have worked with dedication and intelligence over the course of the day, I'm feeling pretty open. Walking the palms forward, keeping the toes up as high as you can. You can flex the quads if you want to. See if you can drop your face and your chest down to the floor while in this split position. Then can you do this move? I've noticed people that cannot do this move cannot do the splits. Put the weight onto the palms and let's do some reps up and down for 10 or 20 repetitions. To me, this feels so good. It's a deeper stretch than any masseuse can ever give you. Then carefully bring those legs together, shake it out for a few, and let's hit our butterfly stretch. Notice I'm not pulsating too much like the morning routine. I'm just trying to keep the knees down breathe deeply, open those hips, and stretch down as far as I possibly can. My diet is also crucially important for my flexibility. I fill my day full of fresh fruits and vegetables. I'll put a few articles down in the description of this video that talk about how meat and dairy products can cause inflammation in your body and can actually prohibit you from being as flexible as you could be. So even if you're not gonna go full vegetarian, make over 90% of your diet fresh fruits and vegetables. I then try to hit this low stretch twist, getting the other hand as high toward the ceiling as I can. Both palms back to the floor. And let's get a little daring here and see how low can we go. Can we get ourselves into the split position? And can we go three or four inches or more lower than we were this morning? I got a little bit of a sweat going now. I'm feeling pretty warm, so I'm okay pushing my body to the limit and beyond. Then rock back Jean-Claude Van Damme style, point those toes up toward the ceiling and see if we can sit all the way down. I then give my legs a break. I don't want to just be a flexible person. I wanna also have explosiveness and power. So I do a little bit of bouncing to try to realign my muscles and tell my brain, hey, let's have flexibility, but let's also have explosiveness. 
I then go into a kicking routine. It's going to be designed for flexibility, starting with knees. For me, knees are very low impact, but they're allowing my body to realign. They're warming up the hip joint slowly and throwing those 10 or 20 knees in the beginning helps me to stay loose and prevent injury. I then go into my straight leg kicks and now as you can see I'm throwing them faster, higher and more powerfully than I did in the morning routine. I am now the master of my body, so I'm going to throw these kicks as hard as I can, opening up that hamstring. Keep in mind I'm throwing these kicks to the air, so they're actually for me, but I'm visualizing an opponent being in front of me, and I'm trying to kick them under the chin so their head comes clean off. And if I visualize this, I get the best health benefits. Moving into my outside crescent kicks or outside smash kicks, making as big a circle as possible, keep my bottom foot completely flat on the ground. Notice my bottom foot. Making as wide of an arc as possible. I also have my toes pulled back. I'm trying to kick as big and as fast as I can. Then I go into my blade kick and notice right off the bat how my posture is much straighter than it was this morning when I was first waking up. And this is because my back, my legs, my body is working much better together as a unit and I'm feeling young, I'm feeling supple, I'm feeling loose. I'm now trying to throw these blade kicks almost as hard as I can. And each kick, I'm feeling the inner muscles and the inner tendons and the inner joints of my legs opening up. I want to feel that flexibility in the front of my leg, in the front of my hip. So I always include these reverse axe kicks going as high as I can. And even though my leg looks bent, inside I'm trying to flex my quad and I'm trying to keep that leg as straight as I can. I was active for a few minutes throwing these kicks, so now I want to get that good stretch going. The same stretches I did this morning, maybe only for 5 or 10 seconds each this time. The quad stretch first, moving into a classic runner stretch for the hamstring, lifting that heel and shin as high as I possibly can, hooking onto that big toe with the first two fingers, and pushing that heel out with a good straight back. Then keep the chest forward and orient the leg to the side. Keep that good balance. Grab the inside of the sole of the foot and push up. Try to get that heel out and hold good balance. want to catch that dance pose from a yoga class there. This is going to stretch the front of the hip and it's giving that bottom leg a lot of power and balance. Look how my bottom leg is trying to hold on. Of course, train equally on both legs. So here comes the quad stretch. Keep that balance, go into that hamstring stretch, work in the butt hamstring. This stretch is one of my favorite stretches for preventing back injury and opening up that hip. Then hook that toe and push it out as far as you can, keeping your back straight. Keep the chest forward and change the orientation to the leg to be to the side. Then grab the sole of the foot, push that leg up, and open those hamstrings and open that hip. Again, pay special attention to my bottom foot. 
my ankle, my calf. All these stretches are shaping my body in the shape it has to be to do the split effectively. Notice I'm training on some tile. I wanna then get a nice pair of socks. Put those socks on and let's work our split a little bit. The socks allow a lot of sliding to happen on the tile and I love training this way. Let's do these split style push-ups, about 10 repetitions. I try to sink down, hold it for a few seconds, then bring it in and explode up. Then we'll change to the exact same split push-ups with the toes pointed up. Notice now only my heel is on the ground. And now that it's evening time, I got a good sweat going, my body's warmed up. I'm trying to go as low as I can each time. After our split push-ups, getting back to that bounce training, to keep my body feeling athletic and powerful. And then I go into a crucially important part of my split training, which is my power kicks. My power kicks are four, the first one being the front kick. Keep that bottom foot flat on the ground, extend the kicking leg out as far as you can, and make a snapping kick that feels like a whip, cracking at the top. Kick two is the round kick or roundhouse kick, the Chuck Norris kick. Notice my bottom foot is pivoting out. The more pivot you have, the more power you can have. And I want you guys to focus on extending that kicking leg as far out as you possibly can. Since we've done so much split turning today, I can feel my hips. I'm going for height on these roundhouse kicks, but I'm also going for control and accuracy. I throw a hook kick a couple different ways. This is one of the ways, more of a Taekwondo style of hook kick that's found in our Kung Fu system as well. I keep the leg as straight as possible and I try to make as wide of an arc as I can. If there was an opponent in front of me, I want my heel to kick them right in the neck. Before I throw this kick, my butt points toward my target and then I make a huge circle if you notice, each one of these kicks, if you pause it at the height of the kick, I'm already doing the split. So the hook kick is like an aerial split. The fourth kick is the side kick. And this kick is my power kick. It's the most devastating kick a martial artist can throw because it uses the biggest muscle groups. Each one of these kicks, my goal is to hit it with snap. I want to stick that kick, feeling like I'm crushing a Coke can right against somebody's chest. And each one of these kicks, I'm feeling my groin muscles stretching, conditioning, growing stronger while at the same time growing more flexible. The kicks get my body moving in many different ways. So now I'll hit my bow stances to try to realign those muscles. It's time to start winding our workout down and see if we can do the full split. Forward bow and reverse bow. Don't use your hands, use only legs. We are now ready to drop into the full split. I practice my split two different ways. One with the feet pointed, trying to keep the foot flat on the ground. The second way, of course, with the toes pulled up and the heels on the ground.
You can notice here at the end, I'm flexing my quads, which I love to do during the split. It opens up my hamstrings and allows me to sink a little bit lower. I wish you a lot of luck on your split training. Please send me a message on my Instagram or my Snapchat, Jake Mace Tai Chi. Let me see your split. Let me know how your progress is going. If you want more workouts and split tutorials, but also martial art tutorials, check out my $5 per month online school at jakemace.com.